Welcome to Alley Picked. This is one of the coolest coat racks I ever made. I made a few others which you may have seen the videos for. I made one out of doorknobs, I made one out of sticks. But I really like this. It's, it's pretty easy. When you look at it, it doesn't look like there's much to it. But there are a few tricks I'd like to show you. Let's get started. So I picked up a couple of these old drills from an estate sale. I got them for a couple of bucks. They're probably from the 1940s or 50s. They're not much use today, but we could still make something useful out of them. So the coat rack isn't really that difficult to make, but there are a couple of specialized tools that I use. You might have your own ideas, but this is how I did it. With this one antique drill, we're gonna prepare two hooks. Using map gas, from a torch available at any home improvement store. I'm heating up the metal so I can make it straight in order to be able to have a three quarter inch straight stub on the end. Once it turns red hot, you'll be able to bend it fairly easily. Be extremely careful when using a torch. You don't want to burn the wood and most importantly, don't touch the hot metal. Since I'll be mounting this on a 3 quarter inch thick piece of wood, I'm making a mark 3 quarters of an inch from the end. I should have bought a metal cutting diamond blade from my angle grinder so I could have gotten a nice straight cut, but since I didn't have one, I'm using this metal cutoff wheel on my Dremel tool. I couldn't get a straight cut, so I used my belt sander to make it smooth. Now we're going to get the second hook prepared, but we need to bend a 90 degree angle on the end so it sticks out about an inch. In order to mount our two hooks, we need to thread the ends of the metal rod. So I'm gonna use this old tap and die set, which I found in my grandfather's basement long after he died. It's probably from the 1940s or 50s. I'm using cutting oil on the die to keep it nice and lubricated while I press down slowly and turn clockwise while keeping it perfectly level. After cutting about a half inch worth of the threads, I can now remove the die by slowly turning it counterclockwise. It unthreads just like a nut. I'll repeat the same process for the second hook. A little cleanup with a wire brush to get the burrs off and we're good to go. In true alley picked fashion, I'll mount the two hooks from a piece of wood that I got from this old ladder. I found it in the alley a couple months ago and I'll be using a two foot long section a quick sanding to remove most, but not all, of the aged character of the wood. On the back side of the wood, I'm using a Forstner bit to cut deep enough into the wood to hide the half inch nut. Don't drill all the way through. Right through the center, I'm drilling a small pilot hole. Now from the front, I'll drill a larger hole so the shaft can pass through. Now we thread our hook onto the nut until it's tight. Repeat once more for the other hook. Using 400 grit sandpaper, I'll clean the surface and give the finish something nice to bond to. I'm using this amber shellac finish. The amber will give a nice antique look to the wood. So after about 10 minutes, the shellac is dry to the touch. Let's mount it. One thing, make sure you're going into some studs or make sure at least that you have some wall anchors. In my case, I know there's a stud right behind here. So what we're gonna use is these actual pieces that came off of the ladder right there. So we're gonna use that for our mounting hole. There, nice and tight, but we need to get a level to make sure it's straight before we put the second one in. Not bad for a couple pieces of junk. So thanks for watching Alley Picked, where we always make cool stuff from junk.